Howdy, Jacob here. Today we're looking at B and G Foods. Some of the financials start with we have a seven hundred ninety million dollar market cap on under two, just under two point four billion dollar enterprise value in the food products industry. Looks like they manufacture, sell, and distribute a portfolio of shelf stable and frozen foods in the U.S., Canada, Puerto Rico area. Revenues have grown quite a bit in the last 10 years from 725 million in 2013 up to 2.1, 2.2 billion in 2022. Return on invested capital is pretty consistent under 5%. We're looking at low single digits here. So nothing super, nothing to brag, nothing really to brag about. They've been paying a dividend in the last 10 years, but they've declined it in the last, they've declined it recently, likely because their earnings have shot down. Margins look very sick in a bad way. Gross margin was 33.5% in 2013, down to 18.9% in 2022. And then operating margin, also a heavy decrease more than half by more than half. So that's tough to see. On their balance sheet, we see 2.3 billion in long-term debt, 50 million in short-term debt, and only 45 million in cash on hand. A lot of net debt here. And on a five-year average free cash flow basis, they were negative in 2022, but as high as $254 in 2020, probably averaging out to about $100 million uh, in free cash flow. And the the aggregate dividend payout is about $75 million. And it looks like the use of cash flow is really just, at the, at the current moment, acquisitions and dividends. And it looks like in the last 10 years, they've historically issued debt and issued shares to fund acquisitions and dividends. Looks like recently that they've only had one huge acquisition in 2020. Outside of that, not really a big one since 2016. None that they'd really have to issue shares or issue debt for. But their their dividend has been pretty high to where... Um, their free cash flow is pretty inconsistent, but they're still trying to pay this dividend. And so to fund that, they've been using debt and issuing shares. So I don't think I need to look at too much more. I can I can really just start making some assumptions here. I think that the company can grow with inflation. I don't think they have too, really any premium. They probably still have some growth after seven years, but low return on invested capital, issuing shares, issuing debt, nothing, nothing really fancy there. Their margins have been going down, so I'll be on the low end of these averages. Maybe let's say three and two share change. They've issued a lot of shares recently, but maybe they'll be closer to flat. And then the dividend right now is a 75% payout ratio on a five-year average basis, but I want them to focus. And they're also going to use a little bit on acquisitions, I presume. I want them to start... Um, not issuing more shares and um, maybe start thinking about paying down that debt. So to do that, let's lower that, cut that dividend in half. And that gets us to a price that needs to fall quite a bit before we get a 15% return given these assumptions. I know my margin assumptions look low right now, but the business itself has had declining margins. And again, we're just looking at the numbers here. And when I see declining margins, I get a little weary and I put conservative estimates in, and this is the outcome that I get. So hopefully everyone enjoyed the video and have a great rest of their day. Thank you.